before we jump into the topic right away, I want to take you thousands of years ago. Can we do that, inshallah? Like, why would you do that? This is like signs of Yom Al-Qiyamah. But I want to tell you a little bit, very briefly, who are Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Sounds good? Yalla, bismillah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions their story in the Quran. And how does it start? Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ They ask you about ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ Who's we? Who's they? I mean, the Yahud, the Jews, right? They actually, the Jews, they try to challenge Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with certain questions. And one of the questions they asked him, who's that guy that traveled the world and did this and that? And Allah revealed the story in Al-Kahf. Did they believe the Yahud? No. Anyhow. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ Allah says, I will tell you how much, how much of his story you look at the warnings. قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَ Allah says, I will share with you as some information about him. Allah says in the Quran about the Qarnayn, إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَآتَيْنَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا We gave him so much of this world. Inshallah, maybe one day we'll have a full-blown session just about these beautiful ayat. Very motivational, by the way. Allah gave him every mean. Fame, strength, uh, influence, uh, physical strength, everything they can think of. Uh, uh, iman, Allah give him Iman. So don't say he's the Alexander the Great, I'm sure of all these weird stuff, because Alexander, last thing that I know, he was died as a Kafir, right? So he's a great, righteous man. We give him all the means of success. Did he use the means or no? Yes. So he traveled, he took these means. Now, he traveled to the west, he traveled to the east. And the details are in the Quran, but that's not my focus here. He traveled to the east, the details are in the Quran, but the focus is not here. The focus is on this one. He had the third trip, the Quran does not tell you, Mashriq or Maghrib. Allah says, basically he traveled. Let's go to these ayat. Hatta idha balagha bayna saddain. I want you to imagine Dhul Qarnayn, a massive army. Why is he going traveling? To spread La ilaha illallah. That's his ultimate goal. While he's traveling, he reached a point, a valley between two massive mountains. Okay, did he find something there that is interesting? Yes. Allah says, وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا قَوْمَ Dhul Qarnayn, while he was traveling, he saw a group of people, a tribe, a nation there. Okay, what's wrong with them? They can barely communicate. So the language of these people is not the same of the language of who? <laughs> Excellent, mashallah, you guys are with me, right? The same language Dhul Qarnayn. So they barely can communicate. So Dhul Qarnayn has a guy maybe that knows French. The guy who knows French knows, another guy knows Italian. So the French knows Italian. Italian knows a little bit of French, so they communicate. Then maybe there's a guy that knows some Arabic. They communicate until they eventually find some words they can put together. You know when you like translate a video like seven times? Just to get to the point. That's almost how it was. So they barely were able to communicate. But Alhamdulillah, Dhul Qarnayn had some people to be able to help. Okay, what is it that they want to talk about? قَالُوا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ So these people says, O ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ Perhaps he was very famous across earth, very powerful, the strongest man perhaps. He says, they said to them, إِنَّ يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ I want to tell you something. There are two nations. So يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ are what? Not two people. They're who? Two nations. Massive nations. يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ مُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ These people do nothing but corrupt in this world. Okay, and how can I help? فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرْجَ ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ Can I pay you whatever money that you want, but under one thing, what is it? Please, please, اِجْعَلْ تَجْعَلْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّ You see the mountain that we live in? Just put a, a, a dam, a barrier between us and them. Anything. That's how horrible these people are. So how much money will ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ ask for? How much money? Nothing. Absolutely. أحسن. Fantastic. Right? Nothing. So he says, مَا مَكَّنِّ فِي رَبِّ خَيْرِ لا, I don't want your money. Allah gave me so much. Okay, but look, he could have built it himself and his army. But what does he say? He says, I don't want your money, but assist me with resources. So I want you guys to help me. They tell you, I'm not sure of the exact wording in the statement, but you need to teach someone how to fish and not just bring them the actual fish, right? So I want you to learn how to do this in case there's renovations needed, whatever the case is. فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةً Help me out. أَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ رَدْمَةً They want سَدَّةً and I will do رَدْمَةً Like I will do even a better job than what you asked for. SubhanAllah. Try to aim high when you fulfill your assignments, especially to your brothers and sisters, and of course for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yalla, what does he want? What material does he want? أَتُونِي زُبَرَ الْحَدِيدِ I want you guys to give me blocks of iron. Okay. Then what? حَتَّى إِذَا سَاوَى بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ They'll bring the iron and put it one over the other, one over the other, until when? 
Imagine the amount of iron they used to reach the peak of the two mountains. Subhanallah, Allah knows how many tons and how much weight is required. Hatta idha sawa, so once the iron blocks are now reaching the peak of the two mountains, what does he ask for? Oh, fantastic. Yalla, blow, heat up the steel, heat up the iron, blow it. Okay, now it's really hot. So what should we do? We should pour more metal over it. Ahsan, Allahumma barik, mashallah, tabarakallah. He's answering the right answer, so but that's good, mashallah, tabarakallah. Hatta idha ja'alahu nara, when it becomes very, very hot, he says, atuni, bring me molten copper to pour it over it. So if you're in chemistry, you can check this out. The relationship between iron and copper. Very interesting stuff. Allahumma barik. When the iron became red hot, he said, bring me molten copper to pour over it. Okay, that is possibly very strong. Indeed it is. Allah says, and so they could neither climb it. Who's they? <laughs> Fantastic. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not able to climb it, nor are they able to poke a hole through it. So you cannot climb it, nor can you break through it. But look what Dhul Qarnayn says. Ready? Two things. Hada rahmatum rabbi. It's not because I'm Dhul Qarnayn, a tough guy. Allah Akbar. May Allah grant us the attitude of Dhul Qarnayn. Ya Rab. This success that you see, the greatness that you see, it's not from me, O oh people. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That wealth is from Allah. That strength is from Allah. The ability to communicate with you and understand the problem. To be able to know the chemistry. It's not from me. It's from Allah. Though he studied. Though he worked hard, though he had like all the sweat and blood and tears, he had all that. But he knows at the end of the day it's because of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us like that always, Ya Rabbi. Then he says something very interesting. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي But listen you guys. When the promise of Allah comes, جَعَلَهُ دَكَّ Allah will cause the dam or the radma or the barrier to what? To collapse. وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّ And indeed the promise of Allah is what? Absolutely true. So this is a fact that it will happen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually I don't have the ayah here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how the Ajuj and Ajuj eventually exit. But let me tell you the process. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, so now all these thousands of years have passed. He says, إِنَّ يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ يَحْفُرُونَ كُلَّ يَوْمَ Authentic narration. Every hadith I mentioned in this entire series is authentic, inshallah. And I was a little bit stricter in this series than any other one, because much of the unseen. He says every single day, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are trying to drill into that, into that wall. One day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so wait one second, one second, one second, brother. You said about thousands of years ago this took place. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says they try to dig every single day. So, and you said they're a large nation and so on. Where are they? I, honestly, brother, I really love Islam, but I'm having a hard time. My mind, what do you mean? So if you can't see them, you cannot believe them? We cannot see Allah, so we cannot believe in Him? SubhanAllah. You can't see a virus, so you don't think it exists? Right? So believing does not have to be seeing, or seeing does not have to be believing. Right now, you're like, how can Allah hide them? Ya Habibi, they're looking for the hostages for 70 days. You couldn't find one. <laughs> right? When Allah wants to hide someone, do you think He cannot make people not see them? SubhanAllah. May Allah grant us all victory. Ya Rabbil Alameen. So here, the Prophet says every day they're trying to dig. Every single day. But then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wakes up from like a nightmare. He wakes up. He says, La ilaha illallah. Wow, that's a nightmare. La ilaha illallah. Wailun al Arab. Min sharrin qad aqtarab. Woe to the Arab from an evil that is fast approaching. What is it? He's talking to his wife. Futiha al yawm. Today, today, just today. They were able to do what? Break a hole into the wall. Then the Prophet actually did this to show you how small the hole is in the wall. So Zainab radiallahu anha. She tells the Prophet because the Prophet had two wives as Zainab. This one, this sister, may Allah bless her, the mother of the believers, Zainab bint Jahsh. She says, Ya Rasulullah, because she was nervous. The evil people are coming out. Ya Rasulullah, anahlaku wa fina wat as salihun. Will we as an ummah see that corruption and among us are righteous people? You see the connection she's making or no? There's a lot of good people, like, do we face the hardship? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, إِذَا كَثُرَ الْخَبَثِ Yes, when evil increases around the world, 
it is a means of more evil to come. So there's a correlation Rasulullah is showing us. Inflation, diseases, viruses, calamities, crises in manners, crises in economy, all of that is correlated to sins. That's what Islam teaches us. So now they poke that hole. How is the situation right now? Anybody knows the situation of Ya'juj and Ya'juj right now? Huh? How is the hole looking like? What do you think? Huh? Uh, uh, close, Ahsan, try. The hole is now filled. What? How do we know that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, every day they try to dig into the hole and went into the wall. So now they broke the hole. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hatta idha kadaw, kadu yarawna shu'a'a shams. Now they're breaking. They're able to see the rays of the sun. In khalas, they're about to come out and be able to break more and more and more. They say, the master of the Ajur Majus says, Irji'u, let's go back, rest. And tomorrow, we will continue what? Digging. So they come tomorrow, and what happens to the hole? It is filled as a brother, may Allah bless him, has mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this happens to them almost every day. Tomorrow we will continue, and then the wall is closed. Tomorrow we will continue, and the wall is closed. Now we fast forward to, till your beautiful birthday, 1982, 1997, 2003, 2012, 2016, if you're 2016, date of birth, I don't know, may Allah grant you Jannah, right? Until what point? Mahdi comes, they're still working every day. Mahdi comes, Dajjal comes, Dajjal is killed every day. I want you in the background, what's the Asian majority doing? Breaking every time, right? Tomorrow will come, tomorrow. That day, Dajjal is killed, the Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in authentic narration, one day, as they're digging through the hole, they say, tomorrow we will continue breaking the wall, and they say, insha'Allah. The moment they say, insha'Allah, what happens? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَيَعُودُونَ إِلَيْهِ وَهُوَ كَهَيْئَتِهِ حِينَ تَرَكُوهُ They go back, they find the hole, just like how they left it last night or yesterday. The power of insha'Allah. So believe it, insha'Allah, wholeheartedly. If evil people believed in it, imagine righteous people like you, insha'Allah. Right? So, but you have to know how to use insha'Allah properly, though. Yes or no? So, uh, some people ask him, what's your name? Uh, Majid, insha'Allah. Like, what do you mean, insha'Allah, man? <laughs> like, tomorrow you're Ahmed? Then what happens? Right? So you have to just make sure you're doing it right. Uh, we mentioned it before, dua. May Allah forgive you all, insha'Allah. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa he strictly, explicitly said, do not say inshallah when you make dua. And many sometimes, even imams, they make a mistake. And it's accidental, I truly believe, right? Unless some of them may not know, of course. But I believe many of us just got used to it, inshallah, inshallah, right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us jannah. I mean, okay, no one said inshallah. Good. So we got there, right? So they say inshallah. Now, when they say inshallah, they continue digging eventually until they leave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to Isa ibn Maryam. Whatever I said so far, I'm back to the story. You see what just happened? I had to do a lot of history to make sense of what's happening. So then when they come out, Yadul Qarnayn, he said the truth. When the time comes, khalas, Allah's promise. Allah gives revelation to Isa. Inni qad akhrajtu ibadan li. I have brought forth from among my servants. Who are they? لا يدا, لا no one is able to fight them. So what should we do, Ya Allah? فَحَرِّزْ عِبَادِي إِلَىٰ الطُّورِ So take my uh, servants to a safe place known as Attur. So Isa ibn Maryam, he goes there, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah describes their attitude. Ready? Not the believers. Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ Allah says they will come from every direction. Every path, they are so much in number. You know to what extent? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says how big of a number they are. He says, the first person in their army passes by a lake. And he mentions the lake, Tabariya. He drinks from the lake. By the time the end of the army reaches the lake, they say, we heard there was water here. We heard there was water here. That's how many of them perhaps are at that time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 
He is saying how the believers and Isa ibn Maryam are stressed out. They're getting hungry because they're spending so much time in the Jabal al-Tur. He says the Prophet, And many of the people, they go to their fortresses, their homes, and they run away as fast and as far as they can. Prophet Isa and the believers are still in the mountain. The situation is extremely hard. They've been there for the longest time. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the amount of difficulty. You thought Ya'juj yeah, Ma'juj may kill them. Now they may die out of hunger and thirst, subhanAllah. And look what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza today. Some of them are dying, not because of bullets and missiles. They're dying because of thirst, because of hunger. May Allah feed them, Ya Rabbil Alameen and grant them water that is healthy and nutritious, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and protect them from the enemy and grant them victory, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. So now they're struggling. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even gives you an actual example of how hungry they are. He says, Hatta yakunu ra'su thawr. So much so the difficulty is that the head of an ox, the head of a bull, like who eats that? The Prophet says, they're so desperate that just the head, let alone the shoulder or the leg, will be so valuable to them than a hundred dinars to one of you today. So talk about thousands of dollars. No, no, I want the head of a bull. I'll give you a million. No, no, give me a piece of meat. That's how hungry they would be at that time. They make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ya'juj and Ma'juj are all over the earth and they're spreading corruption. Look at the arrogance. Look at the arrogance. They say, Qatalna ahl al-ard. We destroyed all people on earth. We don't see anyone. You see anyone here? No. The whole army, we don't see anyone. So they brag, we killed everybody. So then they say, let's now kill people, not on earth, let's kill people where? In the heavens, in the sky. So they actually get arrows. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they get arrows and they aim it upwards and he starts shooting. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah will cause, Allah will cause the arrows to come back. I thought when I read the hadith, the arrows come back and hit him. But the Prophet says the arrows come back filled with blood to deceive them. So then they say, We defeated the people on earth. We killed those in the heavens. We're the best of the best. He says, making dua. Believers making dua. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. It's getting very difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sends what upon them? He sends worms. Tiny little insects. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, It falls on their necks. Tiny ones enters the body. فَيُصْبِحُونَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Within no time, they all die nafsin wahida at once. Allahu Alam, hundreds of thousands, millions, Allah knows best, they all die from a little worm. And inshaAllah, we'll talk about that later, how Allah's punishment, even to us, may Allah forgive us, Allah's punishment in general is correlated to the sin that was committed. Remember that. Someone keeps watching haram, damage may happen to the eyes. Someone keeps hearing haram, damage may happen to the ears. Someone chooses their money and their job at the expense of Salatul Jumu'ah. You gave up Jumu'ah because you were shy to tell your boss, I have to go pray Jumu'ah. Then that job will become the means of pain for that individual. Stress and anxiety. May Allah protect us. Oh, I don't want to do this. I want to dress that way. You are willing to dress in a way against Allah because to look this and that, that will be a means of your own pain. May Allah protect us. Ya Rabb. Subhanallah. So what's the connection? I want to ask you. What's the connection of what I said to the punishment of the worm to Yajid Majuj? What's the connection? What would you take? What would you connect it with? Go ahead. Fantastic. They were so arrogant. May Allah protect you and make us all humble. So arrogant. We beat everybody. You got killed by a worm. You got killed by a worm. Not comparing a worm to a Sahabi or comparing Ya'juj to Abu Jahl. But Abu Jahl, who was known as the Pharaoh of Ummah Muhammad, وسلم, he was massive. He was big. And he was intelligent, but not enough to become Muslim. In Badr, when Abu Jahl was killed, who came and stood on his body? Abdullah bin Mas'ud, one of the smallest Sahaba, but the biggest in value. So he stood on Abu Jahl. Like imagine a full-blown man can stand on another guy. Like that's how small Abu Ibn Mas'ud was, and that's how big Abu Jahl was. So look at the scene. 
that Abu Jahl, you are this, you're that, you got killed by someone valuable. But look at the size. Right? And may Allah grant those who seem weak, may Allah grant them victory to the superpowers that are evil in this world. So here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, how they died from an insect. Yeah, because you're nothing. You're arrogant walking like this. So then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look what he says. He says that Isa ibn Maryam, he eventually leaves, and some sahaba, they see, they look outside the mountain, what do they see? The bodies of Ya'juj and Ma'juj all over the place. And the Prophet says, it smells so disgusting. Imagine all these bodies dying. Zahamuhum wa natanuhum. So then Isa ibn Maryam makes dua. What am I learning from this whole thing? Isa ibn Maryam makes dua. What is Isa ibn Maryam showing you? The power of dua. And then when they were struggling, Ya Allah, help us, help us. Allah sent what? The worms. So your dua can send missiles without you being in jail. <laughs> he liked that. <laughs> He's going to get me in trouble now, right? So, so basically, Rasul Isa ibn Maryam, he makes dua to Allah this time. They're dead, but what do you want? Ya Allah, help us because the scene is terrible. The bodies, the stink. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends birds. Birds that not look familiar to us. He says, Their necks of these birds are like the necks of camels. So they come, فتحملهم, and carries the bodies of every one of Yajun Majuj. Then it throws it away wherever Allah wills. Then, is that it? No. The blood, still the smell. The Prophet says, ثم يرسل الله مطرة. Then Allah sends so much rain. Not a single house on earth. That's what the Prophet says. ولا وبر. Even a tent that يعني, made from a simple material. Every single house will have water that cleans the entire earth. حتى يتركها كالزلفة. It makes it seem like a mirror. So clean, so beautiful. Then Isa ibn Maryam comes down. They're so happy. They're so delighted. Sahaba come down. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are dead. No more Dajjal. Then the goal of Prophet Isa and the Muslims now, what would it be? What would be the goal of Prophet Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam? Khalas, we went through so much, right? Malham al-Kubra, the great battle. We just had al-Mahdi and the army. We just had Dajjal. We just had Ya'juj and Ma'juj. What will be the goal now? How do the elite move from one phase to the other phase? How do people today celebrate their achievements? How? Brothers and sisters, he goes, conveys the message in the most beautiful way ever. And question to you, do you think people believe, especially the loving, and many of them are genuine Christians, when they see Isa and he talks to them, I'm not a God, I'm a, I'm a human being just like you, I'm a messenger of God, this is and that. Do you think they will believe? How many of them, percentage? Look what Allah says, وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ Allah says every single one will believe. Not a single one will be away from Islam. Every single one will believe. And Isa ibn Maryam and all earth becomes what? It's Muslim. Earth will have nothing except Islam. What will Isa do? This is authentic narration. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says he will do three things, three highlights. Number one, Yaksiru salib The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Jesus when he descends he will go and break the cross This is very offensive I was not crucified I was not very much naked on a cross bleeding Attributing that I was a son of God No So that symbol He goes and he breaks the Isa ibn Maryam What else does he do sisters? Huh? وَيَقْتُلْ الْخَنْزِيرْ أَحْسَنْتْ And he kills the swine If we did not know this Eating pig or pork is haram, even for the Yahud and the Christians. And then, there's some sort of tax that was taken from non-Muslims that live in Muslim lands, and they are safe, and they are protected. One more time. Some non-Muslims lived where? In Muslims' land. Muslims gave them protection, but at the expense, you pay a certain tax known as jizya. Do they pay zakah, the non-Muslims, in Muslim lands? No. Muslims pay zakah. These people, they pay jizya. So he drops it. Why does he drop jizya? One of the meanings, why? Huh? Because there's no non-Muslims left on 
Wallah, he's he's, and so far he's right. The moment he gets a wrong answer, we're going <laughs> right? MashaAllah, may Allah protect you. See what I mean? Because there are no more non-Muslims. They're all Muslims. Tayyib, this is great, bro. This is amazing. Oh, you didn't hear anything yet. We're going to finish very soon, inshallah, take a nice long break. But when this happens, he drops the jizya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa tadhhabu al-milal, every single religion, you name it, will no longer exist, exist illa al-Islam. Wa takunu al-kalima wahida, all earth is united. Fala yu'bad illa Allah, no one is worshipped by but Allah. Wa tada'u al-harbu awzarha, what does that mean? No more war, none of that is necessary. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells earth, Man, this, this is going to be pretty nice. Yeah. You call al ard and biti thamaratik. Go bring forth your fruit. Ah, what connection do we find? Deen, iman, Allah puts khayrat. Allah puts blessings. There's a connection. Because there's a lot of corruption, so a lot of damage, economy, health, education, etc. So then Allah tells earth, grow your fruit. Restore your blessings. Ready for the blessings? You guys ready, inshallah, some examples? The Prophet says that it will be such a blessed time if you put a seed, bidra, on a rock, it will become a whole tree. How is that? That's how blessed the time is. I remember when I was doing my sprinkler system, a guy came, you know when they do the sprinkler system, they install it, they try to see like what angle. Why do they do that? Because they don't want it to come to like a land that is not going to benefit from the water. So... I remember one time the water was coming on the concrete and he made, and he made a joke and some humor highly. And he says, you know what? We make sure you don't want to put it on the concrete because no grass grows on the concrete. I'm like, and I know that's why you're here. No problem, right? 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 May Allah bless him and guide him. Say, I mean. So he's doing this. He's like, we're going to make sure it doesn't touch the concrete. If we live at that time, we'll do two things. We will put seeds on the concrete and take out the sprinkle system. <laughs> that's how much barakah at that time there will be. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says about the food. He says, Hatta yashtami'u nafar A group of people will gather ala al-qatfi min al-inab with a cluster of grapes or a piece of grape. The whole family shares it. Wallah, alhamdulillah, that was great. No need for cashews and fustu halabi and pistachio and all that stuff and get coffee, then get the tea, then make sure you get the cake from cause. None of that stuff. Grape, enough. Everybody's happy. Everybody's satisfied. Look at this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, so much barakah, a group of people will gather on a pomegranate. One, the whole community, Bismillah, they eat from it. How? Baraka, baraka. May Allah bring the barakah back to our Ummah, Ya Rab. May Allah put barakah in our time, in our health, in our mind, in our iman, in our salah. Ya Rab, barakah. Allah ma barik lana, Ya Rab, alameen. The barakah, the Prophet says, it will not just suffice them, they go under the shade of the skin of the pomegranate. Like, bro, ta'al, come, come here to my patio. Like, mashallah, nice design. He's like, yeah, that's a pomegranate. Like, oh. that's the amount of barakah. Like, now we talk about size as well. How about the drink? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَيُبَارَكْ فِي الرِّسِلِ And the milk would be so blessed that milk from a camel, one camel is enough. الْفِئَامْ مِنَ النَّاسِ To a large population, one bowl of milk, enough. And the milk from a cow will be enough for a whole tribe. And the milk from a sheep would be enough for the entire family and the cousins. Subhanallah. طيب, what about emotions? Emotions, we'll talk about emotions. No more enmity, no more conflict, no more why he's looking at me like that. Because when I walked in, a few of you were looking at me in a very weird way. And one of you commented on my hair. And you guys are laughing because you're mean. <laughs> right? I know, I know it's standing this way and that way. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recover because, alhamdulillah, some of us, we went to Umrah. And may Allah grant us humbleness, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And honestly, this is one of the things to appreciate about uh, cutting the hair really short or even shaving the head like some brothers have done. It's very humbling. Every time you look at the mirror, you're like, man, I went to Umrah. Someone says, mashallah, I came back from Umrah. So what happens to you? You actually think twice before committing a sin. I just came back from Umrah. There's barakah in that. And it makes you very humble, subhanAllah. And it makes you patient. Yes, it makes you very patient. Today I went to the barber. And he looked at me, he's like, what am I going to do with you, right? I feel like helpless, subhanAllah. I'm like, just clean up the beard, line up, do something, right? So I, I asked him today, I said, his name is Ali. I said, Ali, like, can we do something here? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I don't think anything will help you. I'm like, some gel. He's like, if you put gel, this will stand. I'm like, la ilaha illallah. It's very humbling, by the way. It's very humbling. It tests people's love. Like, do you love me for who I, who I am or for my hair? May Allah forgive us, right? <laughs> right? 
all these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best. And I shared with him a statement. He was so impressed by the statement. I want to share it with you guys too. Can I share it? I learned it from one of our mashayikh. The statement is, مَن تَعَجَّلَ الشَّيْءَ قَبْلَ أَوَانِهِ عُوْقِبَ بِحِرْمَانِهِ If you hasten something before its time, you will be punished by losing it. If you hasten something before its time, you will be punished by losing it. You're baking a cake, as an example. You're so hasty. Uh, I, I, it's only nine minutes and a half, but it says on the box, 10 minutes. Yeah, but what, 30 seconds will change it? You are hasty. You take it off, you ruin the cake. You have to start from, from scratch. So all this because of the hair situation. Anyhow, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pours the blessings, the food, emotions, no enmity, no conflict, no tabaghut, no hatred, no tahasud, no envy, Allahu Akbar, no jealousy, none of that stuff. Everything is beautiful. Okay, how about safety and security? Allahumma zid wa barik. When it comes to safety and security, ready for this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, the amount of safety and security will even pour onto animals. That the lions will be nurtured next to camels. No offense. And if a kid, the Prophet says, al walid a little girl, will come see a lion. No offense. Forget Detroit Zoo. You go to the lion. And she, tadurru. What is tadurru? Like, smacks the lion. Right? Fala yadurruha. The lion looks like, no worries, right? No harm, no fear. Allah, may Allah put barakah in our lives. Yamurru rajul And a man would walk by a lion. Like, maybe it's because it's a baby. No, the Prophet says, even a man would walk by a lion. La tadurru. When nimaru ma'al baqar. And the tigers will live peacefully with the cows. Ready for the next one? Ready. With the abu ma'al ghanam. All the videos that you watch, the sheep and the wolf, they'll be canceled. The Prophet says the wolves will live with the sheep forever. Like in that time, that they will not eat one another, they will not harm one another. You want more? Look what he says. So it's not just live peacefully. The wolves defend the sheep. Like, hey, what are you walking? Like, no, lions. Like, I'm good. He's like, okay, don't, don't mess around with my sheep. Who's defending the sheep? The wolves. And the kids, they play with snakes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, even a child, الوليدة, a snake would open up, right? So the kid does this. Look how explicit Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. Snakes will not hurt no one. A child will step on a snake. Man, oh, oh my bad, this is a snake. Now you see what? A centipede. You call the whole world. Right? Dearborn knew a centipede and... Right on this train of war, stressed out. Snake, Adi, no problem. The Prophet says, What does that mean? Every poisonous animal, the poison will be extracted off of it. So, no more poison, subhanAllah. And money will be so much in abundance, so much so that no one wants to get any money, no zakah, no more fundraisers. No more soft pitch, you know, donate this. And by the way, please donate to the ICD, inshallah, all right? Because now it's a blessing. Because a time will come, like, I wish I donated before. Allahu Akbar. So the doors of sadaqah donations are, are open right now. So give. Look what the Prophet says. This time is so blessed. No one wants money. sajda. One prostration will be more valuable than all of earth and what's on it. Because there's not much of support to give to other people. Everybody is comfortable. So one of the best things you can do is what? Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a great life, right? That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Tuba li'ayshin ba'd al-Masih. What a great life it is for to live at the time of Isa ibn Maryam. And he performs Hajj and Umrah. May Allah make us in his group if we live long enough, right? That'll be a nice religious leader in your Umrah group, right? May Allah grant us the best. This lasts for about seven years. Mahdi eventually passes away. Isa ibn Maryam eventually passes away. What happens to earth after that?